Why is it very, very important to define who you are? Usually like will attract like. And so who you are would help you to attract the types of person you are. Identifying the challenges in who you are, because everybody has their weaknesses and their strengths, would also help you to identify um, the areas where you're strong and the people you need to attract to yourself to make you stronger, because the stronger you are, the stronger your business is. Who you are will help you to identify the areas where you're very weak and the kinds of people, the types of people, their personality types. That would also help you to plug the weaknesses and your weak spots, your blind side, because everybody's got a blind side. What do you do now? Now, these questions that we call the five top questions of an entrepreneur are so critical to the success of any business that we run as entrepreneurs. What am I doing now? Are you a professional? Are you looking to start that business as a professional? Are you going to start part-time? Are you going to go full blast and start a brand new business? What do you do now? Have you stored up some capital? Do you have what we call a war chest? <laughs> so that when the adversities and the you know, circumstantial issues you know, begin to crop up in the market, how are you going to fight those issues? How are you going to position yourself? Now we use fight because we are entrepreneurs. And we find that in the journey of an entrepreneur, there are usually times when you will need to go into the market headlong and really fight for the survival of the business. And of course, when we say fight, I mean, we say that, you know, as a metaphor, we're not asking anyone to box anybody, you know, but we're just saying there are situations in the market that come up that we will need to face headlong and, that, you know, you know, address those issues deliberately, intentionally, so that we can move forward in the journey of our businesses. And so that we can move forward with the clients that we've been able to attract to ourselves. So what you do now will help you to strategically position yourselves, even to address those issues that come up in the journey of entrepreneurship. If you're a professional uh, who has a regular nine to five job, then you understand that the time you have to address or manage the business effectively and efficiently might be limited. However, if you're a full-time entrepreneur, perhaps you have more time on your hands. Of course, that's subject to interpretation because I've had people come into class and they tell us that even as a professional, they find a way to manage their businesses effectively even much more than uh, you know, full-time entrepreneurs. And that it's a, it's a function of the passion that you have available to you. Now, if you've defined what you do now, whether you're a full-time entrepreneur or you're a part-time entrepreneur who has a nine-to-five job and is a professional, uh, I mean, it's a function of how much time you have. And for some people, they tell you also that for some people that are not so experienced, they can actually um, manage five hours and manage their businesses full steam for only five hours because they've gotten so good at what they do. But the question then is, who will do your work for you as an entrepreneur when you're away at your professional work, uh, workplace, uh, your nine to five job, that's what I mean by that. Uh, you need to define that on one hand, meaning the members of staff, your team, if you think you need a team right away. Uh, the other question you need to answer is, what do they need? Now, what do they need? Uh, that's the people, your target market. Uh, who will I do it for? The third one also, also actually implies your target market. Because once you've defined who, um, what you do, you need to define who you will do it for. And who you will do it for is also your target market because you will be offering services to that target market. Would you be market facing um, or would you actually be serving internal clients, maybe partners, that all have ready-made clients and you're looking to serve them and meet their needs. All of this have to be defined in the journey of entrepreneurship before we go headlong into the full business. 
And in identifying the target market, perhaps you've identified that you will be serving women, you'll be serving women of a particular type. Are they Blacks? Are they Asians? Are they Caucasians? Who are you serving? And what do they need? Are you serving youths? Are you serving students? Are you serving men? Are you, serv are you serving um, toddlers, teenagers? You need to stratify, you need to have a take some strategic action in mapping out the market that you would serve, the people in the market, and their geographical location. Uh, the language they speak, they all come as part of the things that you need to do. They come with the territory of the entrepreneur to map out the market, to strategically define the demographics, the geography, the language that is spoken. Because in so doing, we identify the gaps in those markets. 